So by popular demand, we are talking about shoes and treats for our dogs and cats today. And it is a big topic. And what I found really interesting is when um, Janet actually brought this up to us in our, our group chat, we all had various thoughts and opinions of what shoes were. <laughs> So I'm actually really excited to bring today's episode to you guys because I think you're going to find that there's just such an array of information from the three of us. So treats and shoes, these are to me like two very, very different things. What do y'all think? As a pet parent, you face more challenges with your dogs and cats today than ever before in history. What's the best food to feed? How do I prevent illness and help them live longer? Maybe you currently have a pet living with disease or behavioral issues and you need a different approach for success. Welcome to the Pet Health Junkies podcast. We're so happy you're here. Pam Roussel is a holistic health practitioner specializing in holistic health for animals. Janet Cesarini is a healthy pet store owner and advocate for health through nutrition. Jessica Fisher is a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Join us as we share our stories, experiences, and all that we've learned to change the way we think about raising our pets. We're breaking it all down and making it simple by sharing how we help pet parents just like you every day, because when we know better, we can do better. I think of them as cat treats, honestly. That's what I, you know, treat. Cat treats, and I think is interchangeable. Do you? So, yeah, so for example, I mean, you can, you can, Training treat, which is just like a quick bite. Um, mm -hmm. This is also a treat, but it's a chew. You know, these are cod skins. And. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> so it, I think it was fun because now I think when my um, customer. Leanne suggested it because she she is a podcast follower and if you're listening Leanne hi we love her um she and Tucker have been with us for a long while and anyhow she said hey I was listening and she was Can you do one about chews and I was like, that was fun I you know because sometimes we talk about serious stuff although treats and chews can be serious and and I do have some notes as y'all probably do too about things to look for and mm -hmm. things that you about when you're buying them off of Amazon or buying them at Walmart and uh, are at TJ Maxx on the sale aisle, you know, so in the sale, I mean, that's just a hard no, y'all. Just say or, no. Or the grocery store. Or the grocery store. I mean, no, no. Yeah. I'm going to say no to Walmart. I'm going to say no to the grocery store. Now, but the grocery store, you can buy fresh meats and yes. your own yes. like that's sure. okay from the grocery store let's talk about before yeah. we move like the commercially available um cheat, cheat, cheat. so since you brought it up jessica do you want to talk about that first the commercially available cheese and treats yeah so you said if you go to the grocery store like yeah. i i told the girls the other day I would love to go to a grocery store outside of my community and go down the pet aisle and purchase so that I can bring them back to Pupology and compare them with the treats that we have in our store. And they laughed at me because I said outside of my community. And that's because I won't be caught dead down walking down a pet aisle in, in a big box grocery store. I'm sorry. I've made that mistake before and i also value my reputation and mm -hmm. service right in the community and i don't want someone to get the wrong impression and we know that those that can easily happen and so walk yeah. down pet aisle in any of those places we mentioned negative 
Uh, unless I'm in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or if you see if any listeners out there that are in Georgetown, Texas, if you see me walking down the pet aisle in a big box or grocery store, um, know that I'm doing research. Yeah. To see what's out there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It, right. it blows my mind what's out there. Um, I think because I've been so far removed from it for so long that if I go, like I did, like, I don't know, a few months ago to do a video, to take some, you know, video and pictures of, you know, what's, what's there, the ingredient. I was like, <laughs> it, li it literally made me a feel like a little depressed. Like, this is what people think is okay. And, and back up, because if that is what you're feeding your pet, I get it. I've been there. Yep. Um, so, I, you know, this isn't to make you feel bad about anything, but just to give you some more information to open your mind a little bit to say, you know, maybe I could be doing a little bit better for my pet and probably not even spending that much more money um, for the food itself, but certainly improving the health of your pet, which could potentially save you <laughs> in medical expenses on down the road. Um, so that's something to think about too. But yeah, like the grocery store aisles of what is available for dog and cat food and treats is scary. I think it, it's, yes, it is scary. Um, for, for those of us who have educated ourselves to be able to read labels, but I will say two things. One, the fact like I cannot stand the smell no, of that please. aisle. Cannot. It smells it's, disgusting mm -hmm. to me. I, like rendered, like a yeah. rendered pet food processing plant or yes. something. Yeah. It smells horrible to me. And also the fact that it is always right next to the cleaning products in the grocery store yes. is so suspicious. Like... Yeah. That just like every grocery store I've ever been in, it's You're either right. on the same aisle or the the aisle next to the cleaning products. What is that about? Dude, like the the household you no, know, the like the outdoor wasp and hornet spray and it's the mm. you know, the the chemical I, the pesticides and stuff like that. It's like what? What you know, hey, I had to go to the grocery store last night and I was looking for a cleaning product. And okay, I went down the half cleaning, half pet, whatever aisle. I don't even know what was on that side of the aisle. Um, I was, I refused to look. But it, you just, I've never really caught on to that. You're not lying. That's true. The cleaning stuff was oh. from, from the pet stuff. And then you talk about the odor. OMG. And the smells. The uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, well, back I am first. super sensitive to chemical smells. Oh, so to yeah, that... walk down an aisle where you are just, your senses are bombarded with artificial chemicals and, you know, things that air freshener type scents and laundry scents and, you know, all these things that they put into fragrances and things like that that are supposed to make your house smell better or whatever. And you're just, if people only knew what those chemicals were doing and then they're put it right next to the cat and dog food. So, you know, those chemicals don't just stay in the air. Yeah. They get absorbed. They get absorbed. Yeah. Absorbed into your materials. And you know, that's a, a good point too, because those chemicals are very toxic, not only to us, but especially to our little furry friends. So, mm -hmm. you know, back to the grocery store, I went down to pick up some things for Hank, Charlie, Jack, Eli, and Mitzi. Um, because if, uh, I don't think I've ever spoken about it on our podcast, but we will um, search out like chicken hearts and beef liver and chicken liver. Um, and we will bake those at home. And we use Obviously, you know, the hearts are for treats, but I can cut them up into tiny pieces and put them in their food. 
um, and we use the liver to add to their food as well. Um, Just, you know, heart, for those of you that that may not know, heart um, is carries all the B vitamins and has lots of folic acid. And Pam, I believe it's cats that really need Taurine. that. Taurine. Taurine. It's a great source of the amino acid, mm-hmm. Taurine, which is essential for cats. Yep. Mm-hmm. For the heart. Um, yeah. Because when we talk about Chinese um, veterinary care, you know, like feeds like. So if you know you have a heart deficiency or like cats have a great they have to have taurine they they can't make it on their own they have to derive it from their and, food um that has that right is going to be what organ and uh, organ and muscle meat right and so mm-hmm. in that case heart feeds heart um mm-hmm. and then liver which we buy um is has a lot of copper a lot of vitamin a a sidebar about the copper. I know I'd written down here. There's, you know, certain terrier that have a sensitivity to copper, and so when I was taking, um, a, I was listening to Dr. Billinghurst, who was talking to Mariah Pearson, and she was going over, or they both were going over organ meats and and whatnot, and um, they had that with terriers, they have copper associated liver disease. And so they should be given less organ, not zero organ meat, because again, biologically appropriate, y'all. Um, that's where all the good stuff is, all the good vitamins, minerals, amino acids, the nutrients. But just to be aware of that. And um, one of the other things that they mentioned was about um, was muscle meat, like kidney disease. Animals that are, you know, either dealing with kidney disease or predisposed. To that, um, they you've got to remove ph- phosphorus, right? Which the uric acid can cause stones. And so they were talking about, you know, grain-based foods are really horrible for dogs that have kidney um, kidneys compromised and any urinary issues. But also to look for organ meats and certain types of meat that have less phosphorus. For example, turkey is a good choice. Is less phosphorus than say you know beef so that i thought that was interesting um but we do buy hearts and livers from the grocery store or from the butcher mm-hmm. and i that- would love to add on to those too <laughs> if i can <laughs> for um copper storage disease mm-hmm. yes it is it has become like a thing lately because people have gotten so into feeding liver treats to their dogs and the thing is that most dogs are going to need five percent of their diet to be composed of liver and so if you're feeding a balance especially if you're feeding a species appropriate diet and you're feeding a balanced diet and they're already getting liver in their diet and Mm -hmm. then you start feeding them liver treats on top of that that's really where you're probably going to see the issues with copper storage. But also, this is primarily due to the sourcing of the beef. So if they are grass-fed cows, mm-hmm. they have far less crop copper in uh, their liver. So we don't have to worry as much with copper storage um, if we're feeding grass-fed beef. However, grain-fed or you know, lot-raised beef are going to have high, high, high levels of copper. So that's really where you're going to see um, Mm. those issues. Good, good point. Yeah. Yeah. So sourcing, sourcing is huge. It is. And then for the, um, what was the second thing you brought? I know. Kidney disease. The kidney disease. Yes. Uh, Okay. The uric acid. Yes. So we probably, most, and and traditional vets want immediately, as soon as they see copper, I'm sorry, as soon as they see kidney values start to increase, they immediately want to decrease the um, amount of protein in that animal's diet. And that is completely incorrect. We do not want to decrease protein in the animal's diet. And really, we only want to start 
decreasing phosphorus in stages three and four of kidney disease. That's where we really want to focus on it. But even then, I would not argue for decreasing muscle meat or organ meat. I would instead want phosphorus binders, which would probably be one of the only instances I would want to add rice is to bind the phosphorus in the protein. So or you a supplement that's a protein, a phosphorus binder. Yeah. Because so, mm-hmm. yeah. cat, cats don't want rice, but yeah, you can yeah. use a binder if you have a cat. You cut out, say for cats. If, if you have a cat, they don't need to be eating rice, but you could use a phosphorus binder like um, Phosfix or uh, Phosbind by RX Vitamins. Um, and there's another one, I can't remember the name of it right offhand, but um, there's, oh, Epichitin. Epichitin is another one that Dr. Becker recommends. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. Good little sidebar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. But in general, What's- getting organ meats from the grocery store, and uh, I mean, especially if you are, um, feeding a processed food diet, uh, you know, getting real nutrients in your pet, because more than likely, if you are feeding a processed food diet for feeding a dry, a diet that is that dry stuff that you buy in a bag on the shelf, it is being, um, uh, balanced using synthetic vitamins and minerals, which are not as bioavailable. So getting real food in where the body is like, Oh, I actually know what to do with this. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Another good point. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. Choose. Choose. So, and and I told you guys when I think of choose, and I know there are. So, Janet, you're going to have like a different because you have a a store, so you stock a bunch of different shoes that I have not used and am not familiar with. My mind goes to raw meaty bones when I think of chews. Oh, yeah. So that is my favorite. And actually this, this little, you know, talk that I was you know listening in on and taking notes about, that's what it was about raw meaty bones. And, and then it went on to organ meats and um, muscle meats. So no, I'm with you a hundred percent there. So we have chews and then we have, which are not complete and balanced, mm-hmm. but they provide you know their own good stuff in their own right. But uh, raw meat bones are like the creme de la creme, and it was so funny because I've I've always sold raw meaty bones, however, in the store. But we don't talk about them a lot, and they are more difficult to convince a pet parent to trust what we're saying and buy them and then consequently give them to their pet because they're not going to do your pet any good sitting in the freezer drawer um and you know saving it for a rainy day because you know they can eat a raw meaty bone every day it's a meal replacement and um so i promise to be talking about that more in the store because they really when i was listening to dr bellinghurst and um talk about it it really gave me a renewed uh passion for it because who you just don't think about in a little turkey neck or a chicken neck all the vitamins and enzymes and amino acids and just all the wonderful stuff that's in those. So that's all I'm raw meaty bones. Y'all take it away. <laughs> I can talk about that a little bit in you know two minutes. Oh yeah, I mean I love. Um, recommending raw meaty bones to clients um, because they are bone is the best form of calcium for a dog and a cat and cats are just going to get smaller you know bones their their prey is smaller so you can start with like I actually with my cats um, King Tut who isn't with me anymore he would just the little wing tip from the wing like that you always tear off when you're making wings at home, you know, he freaking loved those things. And so that's a great way to start your cats on raw meaty bones. And then what's really cool about it is that nature 
provides. So all of the like muscle meat that might be attached to that bone, the cartilage, mm -hmm. all of that is actually prepping the digestive system to be able to break down and digest that bone. So your, your animal is going to get like, like you were saying, it could o almost be a complete meal or you could do a, um, you know, once a week, that's their dinner is a raw meaty bone. And then just include some bone in the other meals that you're making if you're doing DIY, which um, not many people do. <laughs> no, that's a lot. You know, you, you mentioned, Jessica, about, um, you know, so small and, you know, you're giving them the tip of the wing and, I have a question for you to answer. And then one thing I wanted to point out that again, Dr. Billing was talking about, and he said with your small animals, be it a small dog or cats, um, he just said to grind them. Or if you have a senior who, who doesn't have many teeth, but you want the mm -hmm. benefit of raw meaty bone, um, just grind it. And that made me think back to the time period when, um, Chris and I were making our own bone broth and, um, you know, the bones would be in there so long that we literally could crush them between our index finger and our thumb. And at first, you know, I had heard all the misnomers about, oh my God, never give your dogs bones. Never, ever, ever. It wasn't qualified about, you know, they shouldn't have cooked bones because mm -hmm. they could off into sharp shards and they can puncture the you know the windpipe the trachea the digestive system they can cause damage you know, it's that fear that certain individuals want to put into pet parents minds mm. and i understand that i mean is it because so nutrition I, I mean i don't understand what the end game is it might be it's just that they're not informed but so anyhow, I, w I used to throw away the good marrow, the good bone. I mean, and, and then when I finally had, you know, started, you know, learning more early, this was early, early on when I had started um, as a pop-up and I was doing all my studying and training and, you know, which we do all the time, but I realized that, hey, all the good stuff is in this and we're throwing it away. So I would just crush it up and I would put it in their bowls and my God, they love it. They just love it. So my question is back to the little guys. When you say that you gave King Tut a little piece of the wing, was it cooked? Was it raw? Where did you source it? You know, did you cut it? I mean, how? Give some more detail because I know that Leanne and the others listening <laughs> are going to want to know details. Yeah. Well, so this was years ago. King Tut died four years ago, almost four years ago. But, um, so I have very few cats, so <laughs> we'll eat raw for me. But um, yeah, like we would just buy chicken wings from the grocery store to cook for us. Okay. And you always t just, you a lot of times you can just tear off or cut with a knife the, you know, in between the joint of the bone, um, the little wing tip. Like if you, you know, when you're, buying the wings from the grocery store and you compare them to like a wing that you get at, out at a restaurant, you're going to have that extra little tip on the wing from the grocery store it's because they always cut it off and tear it off because it's going to burn when you're cooking it because it's so small mm -hmm. and so thin. But I mean, it, you know, animals for the most part kind of instinctively know to chew on, on these things. And King Tut immediately just took to it and knew to chew it. And he chewed and chewed and chewed. And it was, it's great, you know, exercise for the jaw, mm -hmm. um, cleaning the teeth, right. Yes. And, yes. um, mental stimulation. So yes. it's all around just, an, not to mention all of the great nutritional benefits we've already talked about. So, mm. um, yeah, he absolutely loved them. And just like when, uh, we cook scallops at home when we cut off the um, uh, abductor muscle. Cats get those. They love mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Right? Um, raw, you know, just yeah. the raw abductor. They they freaking love them. We're not going to eat them. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do with the shrimp tails. 
Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It's like caviar to to us. We like caviar. Um, (laughs) I'm not brave enough to ever try that, but they love the shrimp tails and we'll leave a little bit of the meat in the end of it. So they get that as well. Um, But you know, we don't throw them away like we used to. So yeah, that's yeah. But I do think like if there is one like warning that I would give about raw meaty bones and I actually made a post on Instagram the other day about all of the things not to do with bones and, you know, how to actually give, give dogs bones, um, is, uh, appropriate size for the dog. So general rule of thumb, it, it should be about the size of their head. Um, as long as you don't have a dog that tries to gulp things, Tra- just training your dog to properly eat them shouldn't take very long. A lot of people will just hold on to the hold end it. of mm-hmm. the bone and let the dog chew and chew and chew and chew until it gets to the little, you know, in piece that would be just the right size to, yeah. you know, choke them and then they take it away and throw it away. Um, until your dog starts to learn that they can chew the whole thing up. They're not gulping and swallowing big pieces because dogs kind of, they, they'll instinctually start to learn unless you have a gulper in which case you might always need to use some form of whether it's you holding it or getting a a, um actual bone holder that there are some companies that make those i actually saw i think a TikTok a while back somebody took one of the um like clamp wrench thingies and clamped it on to the end of a bone and that way the dog couldn't ever you know finish it (laughs) yes that that is um, something I have told some of our customers, but you know, we sell the bully buddy, which I think is an, is a beautiful way to spend some money on an insurance policy, if you will, because I have one of the five is a gulper, Charlie. And I just posted him on Instagram earlier today. Um, he was enjoying a, I think it was a bully. Oh, it's a collagen chew. Um, it was one of these, <laughs> but only a single, and I have to put it in the um, bully holder because he will swallow. He chews once or twice, um, like the owl who um, licks the Tootsie Roll Pop, and then he <laughs> he eats it on that commercial from when we were young. And um, he does that. So I just put everything in in that buddy or a clamp, so that we we are not sorry later. Right. But I don't, yeah. and here's the the thing. We. We, meaning all three of us, you know, hear from parents that pet parents that are worried about getting, giving their dogs bones or chews um, because of swallowing and, and then secondly, because of digestibility. And, you know, I want to assure everyone listening that what we're talking about, these are 100% digestible um, products, treats. And the chipping their teeth. That's a big the, thing. Now. Yes, yes, we do a lot of um, educating our customers on that as well. Like especially with antlers. So, you know, and I'll talk about antlers for a few seconds. But we can have stag, you can have elk, you can have moose antlers, for example, and you can have whole and split. And again, back in the pet community, you'll hear never give your pet you know an antler, and that's infuriating and it's disappointing because. You know, the the marrow that's found in the middle of that antler is so valuable to your pet. And so we we only buy elk antlers because that's the middle of the road on being, you know, too hard. Moose is very soft. Stag is like concrete. Elk is in the middle. And then we also only um, provide and, and um, suggest split antlers. So that you aren't, you don't have that outside, you know, calcified, you know, bone. You are, you already have it split. The marrow is exposed and they can start, you know, and, and the marrow is porous. If, you know, somebody's listening and they haven't ever seen the marrow, it's porous and their canines are so strong. And that to see them scrape on that, they're scraping off the tartar. They're getting, you know, the nutrients from the actual um, antler itself. Like you said, Jessica, it's mentally stimulating, which leads to physical stimulation and, you know, gives them enrichment as well as nutrients, well as a good dental. So Mm -hmm. we we do go through, 
I don't, I couldn't tell you how many chews I order on a monthly basis, but it is significant. It's about 10%, 10% of our sales every month. Mm-hmm. And, and I it, think that that's a pretty like important differentiation in how we use treats and chews for dogs versus cats. So chews specifically, a lot of times we use them for our dogs um, if you're if you're not a DIY raw feeder, because if you are, then raw meaty bones are probably a staple of your dog's diet. But if you're not doing it DIY, then any sort of bone or chew is something we give them for enrichment, something most people are going to give them to get their dog off their back for, uh, you know, an <laughs> amount of time, right? Versus yes. cats, you know, we're not, that's not how we interact with cats. Right, Pam? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you a segue to talk. <laughs> yeah, talk. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um, years ago, I used to have, when I was living in a different place, there was a store that had frozen raw food for pets and they had frozen quail that had been deboned and, you know, not deboned, I'm sorry, that's not right. Be feathered and all of that, but it was you know, just the frozen quail, not the head will not be gross, but you could, I love, I love these because they were small enough that you could get the kitchen shears and cut them into pieces. And my cats would eat their raw quail, the bones. Aylin would eat the little wings because it is a little wing, right? She was a little girl. So she liked the wings, but I can't get them anymore because where I live, um, Whole Foods used to sell frozen quail that was deboned except for the wings but I don't live near Whole Foods so it's it's downright near impossible to find frozen quail anymore I and mm-hmm. it makes me so sad because they loved that quail and I'm sure these kittens would eat a quail wing if I had quail <laughs> so um I've tried Cornish game hen but even though some of those bones are a little too big for the kitties. So quail would be my ideal if I could find quail. But um, yeah, they did. They did love those. I just don't know where to find a, a cat appropriate size option. You know what I well, mean? Well, you know, a, a few Thanksgivings ago, my stepdad you know, they were prepping the turkey and they cut the neck off because it came, it was one that came with the neck and he was going to throw it away. And I was like, don't throw that away. Give it to the dogs. Right. And so they offered it to the dogs, but the dogs didn't know what to do with it. So it sat there for a minute. And the cat that my mom had at the time jumped down and just started chewing on it. I was like, let, let her at it. She's not going to get that down her gullet. Right? <laughs> let her have at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And I don't know that the butcher at the grocery store has chicken necks and chick, you know, turkey necks. I mean, how many people ask for that at the grocery store? Right. <laughs> not very many. You can go to the farmer and see, you know, yeah, I could, which I go to wrong. every weekend. I could ask them if they had any, I'm sure they would. They have everything. They sell everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so good mental stimulation and really, really great for their teeth, but we're probably not using it in the same way of like, leave me alone for 45 minutes and go chew on this bone, right? We're not doing that with our cats. Yeah, no, I just want to eat it. <laughs> but even with our kitty cats, um, you know, especially because our, our cats can be very, we call them kibble addicts, but they're carb addicts. Mm-hmm. Um, That's what treats on the market are made for our cats to just keep, keep throwing those carbs right at those kitties. Right. So again, with our cats, a single ingredient treat is, is my, my go-to. Yeah. That's what I prefer to freeze dried single ingredient. Yep. Yes. I love them. Heart, lung, liver. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, fish. oh, minnows, minnows, yes, <laughs> great with omegas, and, and you know, a fish-based omega, not a plant-based. But um, 
So I was introduced to a new brand yesterday that I'm going to be taking a deeper look into. And at first I was, um, I was a little put off by the packaging to be quite transparent with everyone. Um, if something looks like it belongs in big box, I have a pretty strong reaction to it. And that this product is one of those. And I told my, the brand representative, I said, that looks like it belongs in fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And, um, I said, I got the information last time. I'm not interested. And then he told me about the family and the history and where they're from. And it's a third generation, um, family that they produce, they raise and produce, um, beef for human consumption in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And why that's significant is that if you know anything, listeners, about the standards outside of the U.S. for raising food that is going to be fed to humans, um, you know, they don't have to qualify things as grass fed, free range, because everything is. Mm -hmm. Okay. So did y'all hear that? So I was, I'm trying to get over the packaging and to figure out because, you know, one, one challenge in a store is just like on your online stores, you have to arrange things in an attractive way. So they're beautiful colors, but they just, I don't know. I'm going to have to get over it because the ingredient is exactly what you two ladies said. I mean, they're single source ingredients. So right now, I'm looking at one that says it's called just beef and veggies. I mean, and nothing else. And it literally is beef slices of beef about the size of my fist that have been dried. And then the veggie is, um, pumpkin and sweet potato. So good, you know, good source of, um, fiber there and other vitamins, but I love it because they're just, they're good size. I mean, one's going to go a long ways. There's one that's just beets and, um, I hope they like it. I haven't taken them home to try yet. We have the sweet potato, but the same thing with their jerky, which is a chew. <laughs> um, it's just beef. It's, it's just fish. And when we talk about sourcing being so important you know I asked about the fish because I'm always suspicious of fish or even you know your salmon oils especially um, and I want to know where they come from because we don't want to have farm raised because just how disgusting farm raised is or can be I'm not saying that a hundred percent of farm raised is gross but I'm sorry it's gross um <laughs> yeah and yeah so I have to make sure for our mission and our purpose and our passion for our own pets, which translates to our passion for other people's pets, I have to make sure it's clean. So, um, and I'm not saying that I hit it out of the park a hundred percent of the time or, you know, thousand, I'm not batting a thousand. I've made mistakes, um, like we all do, but I try to rectify it. And I also try to have something for everyone. So for somebody who's transitioning from big box or grocery store to an independent store, you know, we want to start off on the, you know, okay, this is a more limited ingredient diet and this doesn't have fillers and this doesn't, it's not filled with grain and it's not filled with sugars. So mm -hmm. that's very important for our listeners to be looking at is turn those things around and look at the ingredients. Yes. So that's so important, especially for, I'm going to talk to the cat people right now. If you go to the grocery store or, you know, one of your big box stores and you're looking at cat treats in general, turn the bag around and what's the first ingredient on that treat? It's typically cornmeal, <laughs> just saying, <laughs> which is sugar, which is mm -hmm. probably genetically modified, which probably mm -hmm. has glyphosate on it. Okay. So we need to be really, really cognizant of what we are feeding i don't care if you're feeding one a day if you think about the cumulative load of what you're exposing your cat to over the long period of time that is not safe you know what i mean so not to mention it's biologically inappropriate and what probably has mycotoxins on it 
Correct. And in some of those treats, they have food dyes in them. Mm-hmm. Red 40, yellow 5, blue whatever. And those are linked to cancer. And those are linked to hyperactivities. And those, I mean, they're toxic. So we yeah. have, I don't care if it says it'll clean your cat's teeth. That's falsehood altogether right there. It's loaded with sugar. It's loaded with inappropriate ingredients. And you really don't need to be getting your cat addicted to that sugar because it's not going to benefit them in the long term. No. said The grains turn to sugar. Well, what does sugar turn to? Stored fat. What is that called? Yeah. And you end up with all these inflammatory diseases mm-hmm. like life. And, you know, one of my pet peeves is when we hear, oh, well, you know, he's, he's fine. She's fine. They, they have no hip issues or joint issues. Um, now. Yeah. That's yet. it. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Until you they do. Until mm-hmm. they do. Yeah, same for humans, y'all. Yes. Yes. I couldn't walk until I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, you know, I, I tell people this all the time. Things start happening at a cellular level that you can't see. Yes. And the body reaches a tipping point when all of a sudden you start to have symptoms and you start to see that something is wrong. And yeah. then by then... You, you know, there is already so much wrong because it is literally boiling over into, you know, your visual. <laughs> it's a visual realization <laughs> now um, that you are going to be backtracking and, and trying to play the whack-a-mole game to try to figure out how to fix the problem instead of being proactive from the very beginning. And let's mm-hmm. make better decisions on the front end so that we don't have these problems on the back end because they're yeah. going to cost you more money with vet bills and illnesses and the medications that they're going to want to put your pet on. So let's pay a little bit more on the front side and be proactive and, and, and work on the prevention side so that you don't have to end up being in debt thousands of dollars with cancer and God knows Mm -hmm. what else. And that reminds me, Pam and Janet saying, well, my dog's fine. Or, I, you know, we had dogs all growing up and they ate Purina and they were totally fine. First of all, you were a kid. You have no idea how fine they were or weren't. I promise you. (laughs) But second of all, we have over generations of dogs and cats because of what we have fed them, because of the environmental toxins we have exposed them to, because of over vaccinating, because of all the nerd, because of all of it, this that we have done in the past 60, 80 years with our dogs and our cats, we have generation after generation after generation created sicker and sicker and sicker yeah. animals. And so they are more susceptible to yeah all of the crud that we are giving them today versus an animal that you may have grown up with 30 years ago, because genetically they just like, they're losing the genetic lottery because of what we're doing to them. Yeah. Your lifespans get shorter and shorter and you can look at studies and see this, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, someone who had a dog 50 years ago was feeding a different kind of diet, but their dog may have lived 20 years. And now that same breed, that same dog is what, nine years old is considered like aging, like old. Yeah. And they they know how much longer they're going to, like, really? What happened to that 11-year gap? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you are that person or you know that person that is like, my dog is fine. We have always fed in my family that my dog's X, Y, Z, um, and they're totally fine. And they have always been fine. I promise you the dog you have today is not as genetically resilient as the dog you had as a kid. No. Right. So don't set yourself up for failure. Set yourself up for success. Yes. Mm-hmm. So back to today's topic, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you always get a bonus. The pet health junkies. <laughs> well, it's all related. It's all it related. Is, well, it is related. And that's the thing. Every time we get on here and we talk about a topic, there's so many rabbit holes that we could go down. 
And so, you know, but back to treats and chews, they're just as important as the food we decide that we are going to feed to our pet. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like having my choice taken away from me, but our pets don't have a choice. So I just want to leave um, on that note is that it's what we decide to Mm -hmm. feed them and what we decide to give them for beneficial treats and everything should add in a good way. Everything should benefit. It should never take away. And, you know, real popular right now is this whole do no harm. Well, when it comes to feeding your pets and treating your pets and it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just think think about it. Yeah, that's actually almost exactly what I was getting ready to say is that every treat and or chew that you give your cat or dog why are you giving it to them? What purpose is it serving in their health journey? Um, so, you know, as we were talking about with our treats, I absolutely love single ingredient treats, but I will also feed a treat that maybe has two or three ingredients in it, like a green juju treat, because those veggies they ha- that they have added to that organ meat or pr- other protein is working synergistically because I happen to feel that Kelly is an incredible formulator (laughs) for animals. And I know that she has put that research into, I I know that those ingredients are working synergistically together for a purpose in the body. So read the ingredient label. How is that benefiting your pet? And go from there. Yeah. And if not, then don't buy it. I'm Mm -hmm. sorry. I mean, I'm sorry, $6 versus $9, it's not worth it in the long run. You know, it's Mm -hmm. just it. And um, when you talk about you can buy, you know, a tub of chicken hearts for $253, consider Mm -hmm. that. You know, I know. And you dehydrate those and they are going to last a good long time. Yep. For sure. Official. Or, you know, you're cooking zucchini tonight for dinner. Guess what? We did that last night. Guess what our dogs got? They got zucchini. And we, we make extras to share it with them. And um, they love it. And it's so beneficial. Whole mm-hmm. foods. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, if you're looking and you're, you're in the stores and you're, you're buying treats, we talked about sourcing. Um, and I want to go back, like I'm, I'm looking at my cod skins. They're from, you know, Icelandic waters, which are pristine. They are nature's toothbrush. Um, they're full of omegas. It, it's a win-win, you know, and it's a, what does this cost? Two ninety nine. Sure. Okay. Two ninety nine. <laughs> they're looking at me like, I don't know, boss, or you're crazy, boss. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, and a bully stick, you know, it's just, that's a bully stick from grass fed free range, you know, cattle and that were cleaned with hot water, not bleach that were hung to dry, not Mm -hmm. just shoved and thrown in the corner while they processed all the cattle and then got back to that while flies and things are, you know, around them. I mean, your bully sticks shouldn't smell y'all. Um, (laughs) Oh, or, that reminds me. Never, ever, ever feed rawhide. <laughs> uh, Don't yeah. feed rawhide. There. That's, yes. It, no rawhide. I mean, formaldehyde, yeah. bleach, not digestible. And it's, you know, like cooked bones, going back to that, too. Mm-hmm. I saw a, a picture that somebody had put on. I don't know if it was Rodney Habib. I'm not sure if it was was their group or somebody the else. Stomach contents, and there was all these little yeah. yes shards of bone after mm-hmm. the surgery. I could not believe that. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, I know cooked bones are bad, and I don't give them, but I never knew that they would sit in the gut like rocks. Yeah that That's that dog wrong. was very lucky. So. Yeah. And then, of course, one final thought about the the common treats don't feed your dog milk bone please oh 
God. Just say no. <laughs> Wait. Okay, but now you're just opening it up to the other pet peeve from, from our store. Titanium dioxide is not your pet's friend. Titanium dioxide, is that what you said? Oh, yeah. It, yeah the that, detergent uh, or whatever. The, oh. It's a whitener. Yeah, you do not. It's linked to cancer. So then, it. Do, do you want to comment about why every bank, every restaurant, like drive through sandwich shop, and every vet clinic has milk bone and marshmallows? They're cheap. They're, They're cheap. cheap. Exactly. I went to, I'm going to, you know, an integrative veterinarian for, you know, Hank who has cancer and we're doing acupuncture and Chinese herbs and we're doing vitamin C therapy and they want to give him a marshmallow. I was like, are those marshmallows in there? And I said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean, that's horrible. Do you want to feed anyone with cancer sugar? Sugar. No. Yeah. So I'm just appalled. That's, that's not well thought out. The funniest thing is that our, our dogs will spit out a milk bone. Sometimes I'll just do it to be funny. And most of the time I ask, what is the treat? Because on the off chance that it's a piece of beef liver, you know, whatever, but, um, that's too expensive. It's not going to be that because they give away too many, but they'll spit out milk bone or anything that is a grain biscuity fake based treat. (laughs) And they have learned otherwise and they know what is good and what is not. And, mm-hmm. you know, the other thing that just gets under my skin is puppuccinos. I know that, it, it, you know, you guys think it's cute. Put on social media, your dog's eating, you know, whipped cream. It's sugar. So once a year for the birthday, okay. <laughs> but, you know, what would be better is goat milk yogurt, mm-hmm. frozen goat milk frozen bone broth, you know, those are treats. They're not chews, but they're treats and they are not going to be inflammatory. They're not going to be harmful to your pet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're going to love it even more. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. Their sure. body will love it even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They'll feel better. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you will feel because you did you made a positive health choice for your pets that you love mm-hmm. dear. So. Mm-hmm. I know every morning Kim gets her goat's milk every morning and I tell her you want to go get your you ready for your milk you ready for your milk and she like spins in circles and runs and she's like she's ready for her milk Aww. <laughs> it, they do they do love it. that's awesome mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well I'm on my soapbox now <laughs> alrighty then well we covered a lot we did, um, we did. That's it. to wrap it yeah, up yeah mm-hmm. I think yeah, just why are you giving it? What is the purpose? What is the benefit? Um, and go from there. Like, just what does that ingredient label say? Can you pronounce? If you can't pronounce it, you probably don't want to feed it. Nope. And uh, yeah, that's about you it. You don't know herbs. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to Pet Health Junkies today. We're so excited that you are here. If you are still here to the end, you are definitely a pet health junkie. So if you're not already following the podcast, make sure you go ahead and hit that follow button. If you haven't rated the podcast, please do so. Uh, That is one of the best ways to um, help us to be able to to bring you more episodes and um, let the podcast apps know that this is what you like and share, hopefully share this podcast with other, other pet parents just like you. And yeah, any parting words? No. I, w- I, I was going to just say what you said. I mean, please go and rate us and let us know what you think. Because if you're a pet health junkie, you probably know other pet health junkies. And we want to grow our little community here of, you know, like-minded pet parents. And we're all trying to do the best we can. We're all mm-hmm. trying to do better. We're all trying to learn And the only way to do that is to share information. So thank you guys for listening in and for sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pam and Janet. I appreciate you both. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.